Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Whatever it is, wherever you are. Wherever you are on the planet. It's afternoon here where we are, but where are we? Because we left you Ooh. by Manchester United's football ground, Old Trafford, just Miles outside away. Manchester last time. And we were coming towards Waters Meeting, a junction in the canal. And we could have gone one of two ways to Ormston. <laughs> <laughs> but where did we go? Nope, not there. Nope, not there either. Do you want a clue? Are you ready? This is going to be a quick clue. Three, two, one. That was quick, wasn't it? Oh. We're in Runcorn in Cheshire. We've travelled 26 miles since we last saw you. And we're now in Runcorn. And we've got shorter hair. We've had his hair did. And sore arms. That is Covid jab. I've had my Covid jab too. You were a bit miffed when you had your hair did, weren't you? Because they, <laughs> they gave him an OAP discount. <laughs> You'd think he'd be happy at saving a bit of money, wouldn't you? I'm not an OAP. <laughs> We're in Runcorn, and there's a dead end at the canal. We can't go any further. When we came in, we passed the Brindley Theatre. We'll tell you more about that next time. And got to Waterloo Bridge, which is the end or the beginning of the canal, whichever way you want to look at it. Sean did a crafty little 17-point turn. He did. You did well on that, I think. You only, <laughs> he only damaged four cruisers. <laughs> and then we came back past the Brindley Theatre, about half a mile, to a boat club, which is where we're moored now. Because it's a dead end. Because it is a dead end. But weirdly enough, from Waterloo Bridge and the dead end, it's only about half a mile down to the Manchester Ship Canal, about 20 metre drop. It's not that far. It is if you're falling. Well, I suppose it is if you're falling, <laughs> isn't it? But it, it's not that far, really. And do you know what it could do with? Somewhat like Alton Towers. Like a an, roller coaster. Yeah, like an like an Alton Towers in Runcorn, where they have like amphitheaters and like boat lifts, and then even better, like a roller coaster funicular big like boat tub that you put your boat in, and then it kind of bombs down into the Manchester Ship Canal. That'd be ace. That'd be ace, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna go see if I can find a bloke who can do that. This place reminds me of where we used to live before we bought the boat. The people are down to earth, honest and hard working and this place has got everything that you need. It just looks like a typical northern industrial town. From here it's about 10 miles to Liverpool which you can reach by road on either the amazing Silver Jubilee Bridge or on the newer Mersey Gateway. Alternatively you could just jump on a train for about £6 and it's about 18 minutes to get into Liverpool. This is Waterloo Bridge and it's the terminus of the Bridgewater Canal. When the canal was built in 1776, this wasn't a dead end. There was a set of locks, five two-rise staircase locks, taking the canal from here down to the River Mersey, because the Manchester Ship Canal hadn't been built by this stage. And that meant that barges could get from Liverpool to Manchester and back, and trade was booming, so much so that it became quite congested and they had to build a second set of locks, called the New Locks, which went in that direction down to the Mersey. And everything was good for decades, trade was booming. But then eventually it started to decline, like most canals. And then both sets of locks were eventually closed and filled in and built over. The new set of locks has now got an housing estate on top. But the old set still more or less follows the line. There is a couple of issues along the way if you wanted to dig back through, but you can still see signs of the lock chambers when you go down there. When the Silver Jubilee Bridge was opened back in 1961, they'd built a link road, but it went right through the site of the old top locks, and that stopped any attempt to reopen the canal between Waterloo Bridge and the Manchester Ship Canal. Now, since the Mersey Gateway opened, that link road's been closed, and it removes the biggest obstacle that was standing in the way of local group Unlock Runcorn's plan to rejoin the Bridgewater Canal with the Manchester Ship Canal. Today I'm meeting with the group's chairman Graham Wallace and project lead Steve Illich to learn more about their exciting plans. We set up this project when we started the charity back in 2016 and our vision is to reconnect the canal, the Bridgewater Canal, with the rest of the canal network. We've split it into three phases. Phase one which is going to start construction very shortly will be to install a boat lift behind Waterloo Bridge you can see behind me here and a winding hole at the bottom of the boat lift where boats will be able to turn around and come back up. Phase two of the project will be to link the canal outside the boat lift 
down to a marina and then onto an inclined plane which will be phase three of the project which will enable boats then via the Manchester Ship Canal and the River Weaver to rejoin the canal system. Steve Illich is the project's lead and he'll be overseeing the challenges that lay ahead in construction of the new link. I asked him what this project means for Runcorn. Runcorn needs to put itself back on the map for 21st century by giving a nod to its incredible thousand years of heritage but addressing the 21st century and making something really happen in our town that we can be proud of and that will change the outlook of the, of the local area. The three-stage plan looks very adventurous and I'm guessing the attraction will bring a lot of visitors to Runcorn. I asked Steve how the link from Waterloo Bridge will look once phase one's completed. Boats will come through just a little bit lower than where we are at the moment from the Bridgewater Canal and then over to this side here as we travel out there's about a 20 or 30 metre distance where we'll be at the same level as the Bridgewater and it will literally just drop down seven or eight metres as part of the boat uh, in the boat lift. Behind that we're going to have an amazing visitor centre which is very green technology demonstrating the best of green technology Behind us on, on, the, on the left here, behind the camera, we're going to have pieces of major art and an area for public events to happen, small public events where we can engage with the public and really make them feel part of something that they want to come back to time and time again. We've got green car parking, facilities for motorhomes to stay overnight with, with all the things that they need, something that is going to create a really great impression. Just a few metres from Waterloo Bridge is Steve's first challenge. Originally, William Baker's Ethelfleda Railway Viaduct was built over the existing canal. But since it's been closed and filled in, how are the team going to reinstate the canal to go back under the viaduct? At this point here, we've got about a 10 metre dig out to get the canal to the right level. And underneath this viaduct, which forms part of the West Coast Main Line, We've got a great relationship with Network Rail and we're working with them to ensure that this is done in a proper and safe manner. Once we're through that area, we're then into the winding hole on the other side of the viaduct. Once the boat lift's been completed, the project want to open phase one and allow boats up and down the lift and be able to turn around in a winding hole at the bottom of the lift. Behind me, you can see the winding hole. Once the boats leave the boat lift, they'll be able to turn around and go back up the boat lift whilst the rest of the project is under construction. By the winding hole is the team's second challenge. This road's been built over the filled in old locks. So how does Steve plan to get the canal across the road? So this is where we're looking at putting in the tunnel. We've got to get across the road uh, where the original canal ran through but we're looking at going underneath the road so with the canal water level will be about 16 feet beneath my feet at this point. With the project like this, it's very easy to end up with a, just a lot of cuttings that are very deep and dark and dingy. So our plans are to actually turn this into a real feature with a properly um, airy tunnel to go through um, and actually make it part of the visitor experience as well. Because the new stretch will be privately run by the charity, they're going to need an income to be able to carry out repairs and maintenance to the new bit of canal. One of the ways they want to bring money in is by building a marina. Graham told me more about the plans. This is where we will be uh, converting the land behind me into a marina facility, which will hold between 40 and 50 good sized narrow boats, 60 foot narrow boats. All the facilities that you could wish for in a marina will be provided by us. We're here to provide a service for the community and the boating community is a part of that. You can still see the original lock chambers from the staircase locks. The shape is still here, the stones are still in great condition nearly 250 years after they were built. There's a few subtle differences. The gap where the lock gate used to sit when it was open has now got a seat in there, which is great because you can enjoy the view of the Manchester Ship Canal and the River Mersey just down at the bottom of the hill. In the olden days, the original route down here consisted of five sets of two staircase locks. Under the current plans, there'll only be one two staircase lock 
So how are boats going to descend the rest of the way down to the Manchester Ship Canal? So the boats come out of the lock into this lower pound. This will be the last main body of water where they'll transfer into the inclined plane. The inclined plane is a giant bathtub of water, about 25 metres long, 4 metres wide, that will travel down at 7.5 degrees where they'll transfer into the main Manchester Ship Canal. Since the original canal was closed, a lot of developments have taken place, including these two apartment blocks, which, although they're not covering the route of the proposed canal, they're just a few feet either side of it. So how are the team going to overcome this? Yes, yeah, so we've got a number of challenges along the project. Uh, all are we were able to get through them all, it's just a case of finding the best way through. Uh, this is one of them where we've had a number of flats built very close to the canal and it's about, it's about making sure that we do this in, in a method that we can create a safe environment for the properties next door to us but still do a full restoration project. It sounds like an enormous challenge, creating a new boat lift, a two staircase lock, a marina and an inclined boat lift. It's going to be tough for these guys to pull it off. But the charity reckons the benefits for boaters and the whole Runcorn area itself will be more than worth it. But what happens when you get to the bottom of the incline? The boats will then unload from the bogies of the inclined plane in the water onto the Manchester Ship Canal. And as you can see, the opening here behind me is ready for us to develop. The boats will then turn to port and go down the Manchester Ship Canal where they will go through a further lock, marsh lock, onto the River Weaver and then back up the Anderton boat lift to rejoin the canal system on the Trenton Mersey. Having seen the plans, I don't think anybody from Unlock Runcorn is under any illusion on the scale of work that needs doing here. Plans are drawn and the charity is confident that they'll soon have the funding they need to start work. So the big question is, how long before we can start cruising this newly restored link? The plans that we have here are for a, an amazing attraction and uh, we're looking at a budget currently of about 24.5 million to have the whole thing up and running and sustainable. Build time between two and two and a half years and uh, it is just an incredible opportunity to make a massive change. I've never met a team of people so passionate about a canal restoration project. As you know, I've always been fascinated by canal history and it's going to be amazing to see boats able to reach the ship canal from here. Unlock Runcorn have been working for years to reconnect the canals and it's going to open up a brand new route for boaters, the Runcorn Ring. It'll go from here, along the Manchester Ship Canal, onto the River Weaver, up the famous Anderton boat lift, onto the Trenton Mersey Canal before looping back onto the Bridgewater. And the group are even planning trip boats to do the ring in a day. It's going to be so exciting watching this project develop if it happens. The members are convinced that reinstating the link between here in Runcorn and the Manchester Ship Canal is key to unlocking Runcorn's potential. And the group are always looking for new members, so if you'd like to join and find out more about the project, I've put the website details in the video description. And who knows, the next time we come down here with Narrowboat Silver Fox, this bridge might not be a dead end anymore. Join them. You can become a member of the group. You don't have to live locally. They'll send you all the information and everything like that. So there's links in the video description if you're interested in joining or contributing to the project. We're gonna stay here a few days now yeah. because it's gonna be nice. So we're gonna spruce up the boat. We're gonna get some washing done and Sean's got a big day tomorrow. He's having his feet done. <laughs> Aren't you? He's been looking forward to that all week, hasn't he? Don't believe him! <laughs> Is this a face that's telling porky pies? Yes! It's, I love having my feet. Do what do they call them, them people that massage feet? They're like a... not proctologist, that's... <laughs> I can't... What is it? Foot... Footologist? <laughs> I can't re I remember it's nothing to do with fit. reflexologists, yeah. that's it. I like a bit of reflex. So if there's any reflexologists out there. Oh. Yeah, because I've got quite nice feet, haven't I? Don't be, don't be scared of my feet. Anyway, enough of my feet. Uh, when we do move, 
we're heading back east because we can't go west because it's a dead end because it's a pet shop boys song <laughs> so we've got to head east but the problem is is we've got another decision to make when we get back to preston brook there's a junction and we can either go right and go down onto the trent and mersey canal which will take us south again yes back towards hare castle tunnel remember that well that's a few miles quite a few miles south of there but that's the general direction or we could take a left and go back from where we came of yorkshire uh, well, it would take us back up towards Manchester and then we could either go up towards Manchester or up the Lee branch back towards the Leeds and Liverpool Canal or the Lancaster Canal or Liverpool. We could. So quite a few decisions to make over the next couple of weeks. I hope you join us for those. Uh, if you've enjoyed this vlog and we hope you have and you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a big thumbs up for us. Thank you. And if you'd like YouTube to let you know every time we release a new episode, which is every Friday at four o'clock, click the notifications bell. Even better if you want to support the channel, and that would be lovely because you get all sorts of perks and stuff like that. And yeah, you get to see him a little bit more. Yeah, and, and here, yeah, if you're not already <laughs> sick of me, and discounts on merchandise and things like that, you can join us on Patreon. There's a link in the video description for that. Or you can do it and become a YouTube member. There's a join button on most of our YouTube pages. Click that join button and you'll see a little video video of us being all sensible <laughs> and explaining how to become a member. You've got nothing else to say because I seem to be rattling on. Yeah, you do rattle on, so let's go back on the boat. He's just but excited. Going. He's just excited because he's getting his feet done tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Ta-da. And I've forgotten already, this is a good start, isn't it? Wherever we were, yeah. Or well, we could have gone right up towards Lee. It's a place, not a person. <laughs> oh, that was going so well. Yeah. The fighting. They're really going for it, aren't they, under that bridge? Yes. And, and the ducks. And we were approaching water, appro approaching water's meeting. Thank you. Runcorn, runcorn. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Can you edit that out then, or? Yeah. Um, and we've got a great relationship and I'm waffling and this is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting your head around all that, isn't it? Right, here we are in phase one of the project. <laughs> and there's a car coming past, so I'm going to stop talking. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so the canals have come out of the lock. We're now in, a, in, the, in the bottom pound. You mean boat? What did I say? The canals have come out oh. of the lock. In it, your joke about the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs>